Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 315 of the Spearhead Sundays uh, podcast. I realize that today I am dressed like a Vice City character who is is about to behead a horse or something. That's exactly how I'm dressed and and we're we're rocking with it, okay? Open t-shirt, everything. Nice bit of bling here as well. I have I have cocaine in a little vial in my ass. So that's how I'm dressed. It's part of the outfit. I'm not going to use it unless I sit down too hard and then I'll have all of it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, welcome back to the show. Before we get into it, uh, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth are all on sale except for Brisbane. That one's not on sale yet. Uh, that was wrong. Loosebeers.com, get your tickets. And secondly, on a serious note, I am blown away by the response to yesterday's or last week's episode. I uh, was very honest with you guys and I said that I needed some help because the bank wants my house uh, and uh, the only way I could see myself getting out of it was to make just a, a huge amount of money in like a really short period of time and that is true. Um, and uh, I offered a, a yearly option on the Patreon where you can sign up for a year at a discounted rate. You'll get a free poster and a free t-shirt and man, Thank you so much to everyone who has signed up, everyone who is about to sign up and everyone who is already a Patreon supporter but up their pledge to the annual. Um, it, it, man, the response has been crazy. It's really, really appreciated. And still, every single day, people are signing up and, and it's it's really helping, man. It's it's making a, a huge dent in, in what uh, I'm in arrears for. And that's... You know that's that's all I can ask for, and, and that's all I can uh, can hope for, and and I I I'm, I don't have words. I'm so blown away because I was just thinking about it. Like uh, you know, I have I have really not been anywhere near consistent for the last three years because I've been so ill, and to see people you know still be around and still be supportive and still be willing to help is is amazing, and I and I, and I know that I am able to to create, and I and I have been doing so, and and this is just. It's going to change my life. Uh, well, it's going to, you know what it's going to do? It's going to stop my life from changing. <laughs> it's going to stop my life from changing for the, for the very worst uh, by ejecting me uh, and being homeless. Uh, we just built, we just got the set looking nice, man. I can't lose the house. So <laughs> patreon.com slash loose spears. There's a yearly option. That's the, that's uh, how you're going to help me if, if you, if you wish to. And, and it's, it's just been crazy. So thank you, thank you so much to everyone who has done it and everyone who is about to um, check it out on Patreon. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. You get uh, a Cyberbully Superstar poster. I'm actually excited to see those uh, on people's walls because I think I was thinking about it. That show is my very first show, 2014. I think I may have sold a hundred of them, maybe. Because I think I only sold about total to the tour, maybe about eight hundred tickets or something like that still a lot for a first tour amazing crazy um but i think yeah maybe only a hundred posters or maybe even less so so yeah hardly any of the people have them so you'll get them if you sign up annually anyway um i had uh even more stressful than the looming threat of losing my home has been the search to find a new barber go to go to our barber I did, but then he moved. Yeah. yeah so he moved. this is the fucking problem. I thought I found a new barber and then he moves. So now I'm like, fuck. This is the thing. I had one guy, all right, Tim from Paragon Studio, all right, in Armadale, okay? I went to him when he was working at some other guy's shop and then he started up his own place. I followed him there. I've been seeing him for almost 10 years, right? And then he selfishly moves to Gold Coast. <laughs> what a what a selfish prick. He's supposed to be cutting my hair. All right. Then I'm like, all right, I'm just going to wait because he comes back to Melbourne every now and then because he still owns the shop. Right. So I was like, that's all right. I'll just wait until he comes back to Melbourne and that's how I'll get my hair cut. Well, he doesn't come back to Melbourne every six weeks. So <laughs> that's not an option either. Okay. Again, very selfish of him. He should be planning his whole life and his travel habits around my hair. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. All right. So then I'm like, all right, well, I'll just pick another person uh, at his shop because they're really good there. So I, I pick another girl and I, and I loved her. She did a great job. We got along really well. I'm like, that's my new barber. 
Then she betrays me by selfishly going on maternity leave. Oh, oh I have a child. I need to look after my child. What about looking after my haircut? <laughs> have some priorities, okay? I'm the most, I should be the most, my haircut should be the most important thing mm. in every barber's life. Okay, so then I'm like, now I'm desperate. Okay, and I'm also like, well, I can't be going all the way from Frankston to Armadale to get my hair cut. That's ridiculous, all right? That, that's only something that you should be doing if you have a regular barber, which I don't, I'm barberless. So then I tried a guy that uh, gave me a card at a show and he did a great job. Harry. At, Harry did a great job. Actually, sorry, he gave me a <laughs> bad haircut the first time, but that was my fault. Yeah. He gave me exactly what I asked for. And I was so deliriously tired <laughs> that I told him the wrong thing and I left and I looked at myself in the, in the mirror and I was like, that's not what I asked for. I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted, but it is exactly what I asked for. Mm -hmm. Went back a second time, actually communicated with him properly, nailed it. Did a great job. Harry is a legend. He's a legend. However, Harry has moved, so he's yeah. betrayed me again. <laughs> but now he's cheaper and he's closer. Oh, he's closer? He's in Mornington. Oh, well, maybe I should have gone to I told to you that. Okay. <laughs> I was in a rush, all right? I'm stressed. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't have time to go somewhere else. I now multitask, all right? I got I to gotta make as much money as possible so I can keep the house. <laughs> I was out in Frankston doing something because I had to go to the orthodontist. <laughs> no. By the way, I'm behind on my repayments to the orthodontist. <laughs> I'm caught up now, but at the time they were like, hey, if you don't catch up, we won't take them off you. I'm like, all right. Holding my face hostage. Anyway, I'm like, all right, I'm going to pick a barber in Frankston. Don't give me that face. I know. I know. Everyone listening to this is going, wow, this fucking idiot. I know. Okay. Oh, which one did you go to? There's like seven. <laughs> There's like seven barbers in Frankston and they're all as scary as each other. It's fucked. Right? And here's the thing. I'm looking at reviews. I'm looking at Instagram profiles. I'm looking at fucking everything. This is the fuck thing about picking a barber in Frankston. You cannot tell if they're good or bad because at the end of the day, they are doing what their clients ask them to do. All right? So I thought I went on this Instagram and I saw this amazing haircut. I was like, oh, look at that similar to what I are, what I have, but then I scroll through and at the back of it, there's a giant fucking arm length rat tail. <laughs> so it's like, how do I know if they're a good barber giving someone a shit haircut that they asked for or if they're a shit barber giving someone a shit haircut? That's the problem. You can't assess a barber's quality in Frankston because everyone walking in there is like, give me a buzz cut, give me a mohawk, give me a rat's tail. Oh, do some, do a sick design on the side of my head. Shave the sides and give me a fucking sick squiggle. Right? That's all you can get. So I ended up just, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go into the place that's the newest. Don't give me that look. <laughs> so I go to the, the into the center. Oh. I know. I was desperate. And it didn't have prices, which I thought oh. was a good sign. Because I'm thinking, oh, that means that it's probably a bit more expensive, which indicates higher skill. Wrong! <laughs> was it one of the ones in the middle of the centre where everyone walks past? No, I'm not going to say the name, but it's one of the newer ones that's fancier. Okay? And I go in there and, dude, I sit down and I wait. There's a big line. I'm like, this is good. This is a good sign. And then I have a look at who's... I go in there and I take a number... And I sit down and then I've been sitting there for 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, this is busy. It must be good. And then I have a look at who's actually getting their hair cut. And it's all 11 year old boys. <laughs> Fuck. What have I done? Get my hair cut at the fucking budget cuts or something. <laughs> look, to be, to be fair to me, in Frankston, it's like you choose between uh, like, a, like a, a 65 year old man called Rocco who's half blind, right? Who's mm. been stabbed at work. Or you go to the cheap cuts... That's they get all of their money from you know Just cutting the hair of of uh, of ten year old boys because single mums don't have a lot of cash to spend. All right, that's I'm telling you, man. The first like expensive, good, fancy barber to open up in Frankston, they are gonna get robbed by someone. To be honest, if they keep cash on the premises, but if they don't, they're gonna make a lot of money.
Anyway, I'm sitting there and I have a look around at the clientele and I think, I don't think I'm going to get a good haircut here. I should leave. You're up. They call me up. I'm like, fuck, all right, I'm going in. Because what am I going to do? The barber goes, all right, next. And I look at the guy that he just cut and they go, no. And I leave, he'll cry. <laughs> so I go in and I'm like, okay, even if I don't get like a gold standard haircut, I'm the son of a hairdresser and I get my haircut all the time and I know exactly what I want. I can communicate the fuck out of what I want. Because I have gone on tour to barbers that I know are not that great and I've, and I've safeguarded, I've protected my hair by telling them not to do a few things, right? So don't do this, just trim it a little bit and then it'll be good enough until I see my regular and it'll keep it nice and maintained, okay? That's how you do it. So that's what I decided to do with this guy. I'm just gonna give him like the basics because my hair was way too long. I'll tell him just to do the sides and leave the top and whatever. And I pull out a photo, by the way, a photo of me. <laughs> like, like, it's not like I'm pulling out a photo of like a black guy with an Afro and go, can you do this? Right? Like so many people do. They show, they show pictures of like hair cuts with dudes that just have hair that they don't have. Or like the, like a, an 11 out of 10 fucking AI generated model. Like no one looks like that. Your hair isn't going to. Yeah. Uh, can I look like Tommy Shelby? No. All right. You're ugly. <laughs> Anyway, so I go and I explain the fuck out of it. I want a little bit on the sides. Don't touch the top because I'm growing the top out. I don't want it to be shorter. And I go, did, 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 did. And the guy looks at me and he doesn't speak English. <laughs> and, he, and he just looks at me with his blank stare and he goes, you want like that one? I'm like, yeah, I want like that one. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and he just, and, and uh, you know what a real red flag is for barbers? When they don't use the fucking scissors, okay? If they only use the trimmer, you're fucked. And he just pulls out the trimmer and immediately starts hacking. And, uh, and here's the thing. I wasn't, wor I wasn't mad that he didn't speak English because I've only ever had, now this is my third haircut, no English, all right? The first time was in Tassie and it was like the best haircut I'd ever gotten in my life. Even you were like, dude, that guy fucking nailed it. Yeah. And we did not speak each other's language at all. Zero conversation, but he fucking, he went to work. Second time was the same barber, but it was one of his mates. He didn't speak English. He fucked me up. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I know. The third time didn't speak English. He fucked me up. It's not what I asked for. I've managed to salvage it with way too much product. But dude, I've got a video coming out, might actually already be out, and I just look like Hitler. <laughs> I just look like Skastaven the Gaven. Like that's <laughs> like that's what I look like, you know, when he's fucking ranting and raving. He's a good orator though. He filled stadiums. Maybe it'll be good for my career. <laughs> anyway, that happened. Okay, now I also have an update to what I talked about on a previous podcast. Okay. Uh I talked about how I got scammed or I thought I got scammed by a hotel. Remember this? I went to a hotel, I booked it online. I showed up at the hotel. They had no record of my booking. They called head office. They had no record of my booking. Money had come out of my wallet and it was a website that I had never used before. I pull up my receipt. I show them the website. They go, we do not use this website. We've never heard of it. We think you've been scammed. I had to pay for my hotel again. I stayed there. And then that was in October last year, right? Over a year later, I get an email from a shady looking address saying that we want to give you a refund. Please fill out this form so we can give you your money back for the hotel <laughs> that you stayed at that you were double charged for. And I saw that and I was like, red flag, the most likely people to get scammed are people who have been scammed before. They're trying to go in for seconds. So I send them back. A, a reasonable, polite email that says something along the lines of, this is a direct quote. I said, uh, I said, oh, also, I forgot to mention in the email, they addressed it to Mr. Flint. They didn't say Mr. Spears. So that's another, everyone's calling me an idiot. It said, dear Mr. Flint, duh, 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 we have a refund for you. Give us your credit card information. I'm like, that's obviously a bullshit scam. So I responded back, suck me from the back scammer. Then I have another look at the email from the email that it was sent from and they respond to me and they say, no, please, we're for real. Please <laughs> fill this out. This is legit. 
I called them and apologized and I got my money back. It was real and I just told some poor innocent woman to suck me from the back. I filmed it and uh, I've, I've, you can check out my Instagram if you want to see my apology. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to apologize for the mix up in this email I sent you yesterday. Clearing yeah. our, our account outstanding refunds, it appears I incorrectly swapped the names of two emails which were sent out. Uh, I understand the confusion, yeah, but no, I think it's. That is legit. Okay, can you please apologize profusely to Isabel? Because I said something very rude because I thought it was a scam. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can do the email. No, it's all good. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll let Izzy know she's in today. Um, yeah. No, I can understand how you think it's a scam. That's all right. <laughs> really embarrassing. But I got my money back. Chuck that on the mortgage. <laughs> Big win. Um. Okay. What else do we have here? Uh, Matt Rives in trouble again. Have you seen this? Yeah, so good. It's I love it. hilarious. So Matt Rives is obviously you know stand up comedian. You guys know him. You, I've talked about it before. His controversy is still going, and uh, he's doing pretty much exactly what I what I said, what I thought he was doing. Where he's really leading in to the to the whole uh, get around me, fellas, let's go, and he's leaving behind this like uh, perpetually offended uh, female audience, and a lot of them are really upset. But I think it's going to be really good for his career because I think a lot of those people just were not going to see him live at all. Um, he's really leading into it though because he did. He did <laughs> He's maybe leaning into it a little bit too obviously because the first interview he does after this is with Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I just feel like he was like, how can I piss them off way more than, uh, with, with, than I did with the joke? And it's interview with Jordan Peterson. And I was like, okay, he's definitely doing what I thought he was doing. Anyway, so obviously he's done that. So a lot of, a lot of his uh, former fans or people who always hated him but never really had a real reason have, have started coming out for him. Um, and uh, this super famous, uh, I don't know what she does, but she's unbelievably famous, millions of followers on TikTok. Uh, she posts her son every now and then, and uh, she like re stitched his, uh, a stand-up clip of his posted by Netflix with her son, like fact-checking him about space. He made some, made some reference to space in a joke, and the kid was like, actually, uh, this planet does this, also, you're mean to women. Bye. Little six-year-old boy. Uh, and then Matt Rife comments on that video. Uh, Santa's not real and your mum buys your presents with OnlyFans money. Good luck. <laughs> now, I think both adults are very in the wrong here. <laughs> okay. He's what a fully grown male going to commenting onto a onto a video of a six year old child. Your mum's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really the, a good look. It's not the best course of action. But also, if you're a very famous mum, giving your child a script mm. to beef with some famous dude who is known for clapping back is like a bit irresponsible, don't you think? Mm. Like I feel like. Uh, Matt's obviously done the wrong thing. I would never say that to a child. Hey, your mum's a whore. I would never say that. But also, on the other hand, it's pretty obvious that, like, the kids, unless the mum's an awful mum, which she doesn't seem to be, it's pretty obvious that the kid's not going to read that comment. But it is, it's a shit thing to say. But it's also ridiculous to, to like, be coaching your kid to beef with adults. Especially knowing, like, you know, it was posted. It's not like it was a, a, a random tiny little kid's account. It's like a chick with millions of followers, blue check, everything. She posts it on her page and it's like her kid beefing with some. It's like a weird thing to get your kid to do. I don't know. I just feel like if you have a child, they shouldn't be on social media. I think it's really bad for them. And putting their face and their name out there, especially when you're famous, you've you got to give the kid a choice on whether or not they would like to be famous as, as well. It's, uh, I don't know, I think it's really lame. But I did laugh at what Matt wrote. Very funny. Really funny. One of those things is like, ha, 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 you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, that's a good one. I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, speaking of things that, that I probably wouldn't have done, <laughs> Elon Musk is uh, just, Elon Musk seems really uh, intent on just running Twitter into the ground. At this point, I think he's trying. I think he's trying to go down with the ship. It seems like he's uh, reinstated Alex Jones on Twitter, 
uh, which, uh, they, look, there's two sides to this. To this. There, there's a business side and there's the is this correct side because uh, things could be a great business move and a horrible thing to do. There are businesses that manufacture weapons. <laughs> you know, if there weren't any, any of those businesses, we wouldn't have as catastrophic wars, all right? Uh, but they make a lot of money, so they're a good business decision. Um, for example, uh, all of the money that I make uh, on Patreon, because of the conflict in in Israel and uh, Palestine, I'm going to be investing it in uh, weapons manufacturers, uh, and I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> Lockheed Martin's number one investor. Abs absolutely. That's, that's what I'm there. Yeah, sucked in. You guys are supporting genocide. <laughs> no, I'm going to give it to the bank that's probably investing in Lockheed Martin anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> you know they are, right? That's where all my money's going, straight into fucking Lockheed Martin. I've got no say in it. Anyway, um, yeah, he's bringing back Alex Jones, which I think is is uh, is a terrible business decision. Like the most fucked thing. He's already come out on on stage and like and like called out Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, by name, and then gone fuck you to the advertisers. You know, every advertiser is going to be like, okay, we're not going to put ads on Twitter. And that's even like disregard the fact that the Twitter ads don't even work. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they, they don't even get a return on investment. And then the CEO of, of, of the company is going, we're not going to work on making them better and fuck you. <laughs> They're going to be next to racist tweets. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, putting aside whether or not this is like a, a, a correct thing to do for freedom of speech. It's a, a bad business decision. Uh, and now he's bringing Alex Jones back on a Twitter, which is really interesting because it, it comes to this like argument of like, uh, can a person who has really, really fucked up have social media at all? Because uh, the thing with Alex Jones is he, he's lost his cases with the Sandy Hook thing. He said the Sandy Hook was a hoax. He accused a lot of the parents of being crisis actors and he has to pay... Uh, he lost his suits. He has to pay one and a half billion dollars. So, you know, no one has that money. I don't know how they're going to recoup it from him. He's probably just going to have to go for bankruptcy and then build up again because that's how the system works, unfortunately. Oh, I'm bankrupt. And then, you know, make a million dollars with a new business under a new name. And then, you know, rich people don't suffer consequences type thing. Um, but it, it's an interesting moral thing of like, should this guy have Twitter at all? And it's very interesting because uh, Elon Musk has previously said that uh, he hated uh, Alex Jones because of the Sandy Hook thing. Like Elon is someone who has had a child die very young. So it's a very personal issue to him. Uh, and he said that, you know, that Alex Jones is evil. Now he's like, oh, let's let him back on Twitter. But he did do it with a poll as well. And most people voted that, yes, Alex Jones should be allowed back onto Twitter. So, you know, is Elon Musk the bad guy for doing this? Or is most people on Twitter bad people for wanting him back on the, on the platform? Or is it not even a moral thing? Should everyone just have access to social media regardless of how good or bad they are and the mistakes that they've made? It's like a... I think... It'll be really entertaining to see what he tweets. <laughs> yeah. I think he's a bit of fun. You know, I think that Alex Jones is harmless if you don't believe anything that he says and uh, just watch it as entertainment, like the WWE, which, to be fair, is what he has said in court. He said that I'm, I'm, I'm playing a character. Nothing, is, nothing that I say is true. I'm, I'm playing it up for the camera and, and Alex Jones is a persona that doesn't actually exist. You know, but is that true? Or is he just trying to get out of the defamation case? Probably the latter. What do you think? Do you think he should be on Twitter? I don't really have an opinion on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I think the same. It's entertainment. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's such an interesting one of like, uh, it's like there are so many fucking crazy loons that follow Alex Jones that probably do and have done awful things that are encouraged by him but not like encouraged as in alex says go and do this thing and they do it more just like oh alex jones would like if i did this and they go out and do it it's like yeah he just has like a uh 
People like that have a, a ridiculously high paranoid schizophrenic fan base, you know? And it's like, should they be responsible for those violently mentally ill people? Probably not because you can't control that many people, especially when you have millions of followers. But is it something that you should just quarantine from the rest of the world? <laughs> Maybe. But I, I always err on the, the side of freedom of speech. I think that someone can be wrong and, and can say things that are incorrect and cause harm and shouldn't really be ostracized from, you know, the public square, I guess. You know, because he has suffered his consequences. He got sued and yeah. he's gone bankrupt or he's going to lose everything or it's going to be very, very difficult for him to operate his businesses going forward and everyone knows that he's a fucking crazy guy that got this Sandy Hook thing very, very, very wrong. Uh, and that's your consequence. I don't think you should be limited from speaking, even if I disagree with the guy heaps and all the time. Uh, but... He's also a bit of fun. I can't deny. I can't deny that he is one of the most entertaining people on the internet. You know, the reason why Andrew Tate rose up was because there was a gap left by Alex Jones <laughs> of like craziest dude saying the most outlandish <laughs> shit from a studio. You know, that's what we were missing. You know what would have been cool if Alex Jones came back with a six pack <laughs> and bald? and started smoking cigars and just started doing Andrew Tate's thing. I would love to see them beef. Yeah. I would love to see those two beef. That'd be awesome. You know, who's going to win the, the battle of the, of the most mentally unwell fan bases, <laughs> you know, people, people who think that, uh, that the, the government is against them versus people who think that women are against them. <laughs> Both as schizophrenic as each other. <laughs> but yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I, I just think I just, really don't like when people get fucking deplatformed from every social media site all at once. I think it's a little bit different if, if you're like uh, actually actively inciting violence all the time. Get rid of that. We don't need that. But for someone who's just like unbelievably wrong a lot of the time, but also sometimes unbelievably correct. Chemicals in the water, turning the frogs gay. That was actually true or mostly true. They were turning them into women. <laughs> it all happens on X. <laughs> it undeniably all happens on X. But that's like the moral side of it. <laughs> the business side of it is this is just the worst business decision <laughs> yeah. he could possibly make. Like all these advertisers are like, should we have ads on Twitter? Should we have ads? Well, they're not really making us money. But then uh, businesses like, say, Ford uh, or uh, Toyota or big car companies are like, well, we don't necessarily need to make money on ads. We just need to, our brand to be seen all the time. Because like when I advertise, I want to see how much money I spend and how much money I get back because I, I sell cheaper products. But when you're selling like, yeah, $30,000 vehicles, you know that no one sees an ad and then goes online and buys the car. Mm. That's not how it works. Your business model is just to put your brand everywhere in movies, in TV series, on billboards, on radio, on TV, online, everywhere. So that, so that when someone thinks, oh, I need a car, they think Toyota or Hyundai or whatever. And it's those businesses that really pump money into places like Twitter because they don't necessarily need to see a concrete return on investment. They just need to see a return on awareness. So it's those ones that are going to be the big bucks for Twitter that they will lose by having the Sandy Hook is a hoax guy on their platform as like the biggest trending news story in the world. When you think of Twitter, you think Andrew Tate and Alex Jones, chicks are whores and the government is trying to kill us and it's run by Jews. That's what Twitter is now. That's what people think of when they see Twitter and that's what's ultimately gonna make it shut down. Like I don't see, that's thunder, it's crazy outside. Making the house shake. I don't see, the, the, I guess it seems like the only way that, that Elon can keep Twitter running is by just burning millions and millions and millions of dollars of his own personal cash, which he already has done to the billions, right? Because he spent, what, $44 billion on Twitter and now it's worth nowhere near that amount? $20 billion now. It's worth $20 billion now. Yeah. So, it's all, so he's already lost, you know, theoretically, $24 billion in value. Um, and... It's, oh God, it's got to be costing him fucking millions of dollars a month just to, to maintain the state that it's in right now. 
and advertisers are leaving in droves. He himself said, you know, they're trying to kill Twitter, which I don't think advertisers are trying to do. I don't think there's like some giant cabal of like, let's get rid of Twitter. I think it's just like, ah, oh, we probably shouldn't have our ads on the Alex Jones, Andrew <laughs> Tate site because, you know, women are the ones that control the spending in households. And if women don't like thing, they won't let you spend money. So let's take our ads off this platform that chicks hate. <laughs> Do you still use Twitter? Uh, X formerly known as Twitter? I, I use it so much less and I dislike it so much more mm. because all I see, like all, honestly, all I see now is just like actual war footage of people dying, mm. uh, people getting shot in the streets in America, like CCTV footage. Uh, and, uh, and fucking animals getting killed, like, uh, you know, crocodiles eating shit and lions taking down a, uh, a, a fucking boar and it, and, and the, and it, it taking a really long time to die. Like that's what I see. And I, and I keep hiding it. I keep going. I'm not interested. I did. I never, people go, oh, that's, that's what you interact with. I never do. I fucking hate seeing it. I always hate seeing it. And I always hit not interested and it keeps getting shown to me. Hey, do you want to see someone die? Like I'll be scrolling through and I just see someone get stabbed. I'm like, oh, that's in my brain now. Mm. So I don't, I can't look at it anymore. I post my tweets and I leave the app. Everything else I'll still scroll. I try to limit my social media usage, but I, I actually fucking hate using X. Uh, formerly and known as Twitter. Formerly known as Twitter. Sorry, <laughs> you do need to always say that because X is such a... God, man, as soon as he renamed it to X, I was like, oh, it's over. Yeah. Like this fuck, this guy. The everything app. Has, yes, yeah, shut <laughs> up, bro. All right. That's Facebook and Facebook's in the fucking mud. Yeah. I don't want an everything app. Okay. I like having my fucking messaging app and I like having my dumb videos app and I like having my shopping app. I don't want to fucking open up Facebook and see, oh, marketplace, oh, groups, oh, fan page, oh, a video, oh, messages. I fucking hate seeing all of that shit in one spot. It's overwhelming. So I avoid it. And yeah, X is just horrific. You deleted it because yeah, it just, it was like instant as he took over and he was like, all right, let's get rid of all of these pesky rules. And then I, and then all of a sudden <laughs> I saw like a hundred people die horrible deaths. Yeah. YouTube shorts was a lot like that when it first launched, but now yeah. it's, now it's a much better place. Yeah. You're on YouTube shorts. I was. Now, I, thought, I thought you were getting a little bit dumber. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just on reels. Yeah. Reels is just so fun. I like reels. <laughs> yeah. Reels is, reels is good. TikTok's, uh, TikTok's interesting though. Now TikTok it's getting longer. Angry. TikTok, yeah. the videos are getting longer because they want to monetize. Whereas Reels is like just trying to be what TikTok was when it started. So it's I'm I'm liking Reels a little bit more. Yeah. I kind of uh, abuse your inbox full of Reels that I find hilarious. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, have, I have like, man, my mom sends me Reels. <laughs> And uh, and they're all stuff that I that I saw eighteen months ago, <laughs> and I just pretend that I've never seen them. Wow. You know, I go, wow, that's such a good one, mum. <laughs> and I'll send her one back. You know, there's something that I saw eighteen months ago that's just starting to pop up on Instagram. She's like, classic. I'm like, isn't it good? That's the thing. All these people. Uh, that's a great way to bond with your parents, man. Is just pretend you've never seen what they what they're sharing to you. You know, mum sends you a, a video that you've seen six times on on a different platform eighteen months ago. You go, fuck, where'd you find this? You're a bloody internet connoisseur, mum. <laughs> yeah, so X, I think. <laughs> how long do you reckon it has left? Honestly, I, I want to know what you guys think. It's got to have, man, 18 months. It's been 18 months since he bought it. I don't see it lasting 18 more months. I only see it lasting 18 more months because he's so fucking stubborn. Mm. I feel like that once... Once Twitter's bills start eating into Tesla, which is publicly traded, investors are going to go, no way, you cannot spend Tesla money on on, on the fucking gore death Nazi website. I listened to the audio book of his new biography. Yeah. And the first, it goes for about 25 hours. The first yeah. 10 hours is his life and it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the last what like 14 hours is just about him buying X. Right. And it is just delusional and really sad to listen to. Yeah. It, he seems, it seems <clears throat> like such a vanity purchase. Like it's like he bought it because, because they, people love him on there. They love him. 
right? Everyone on Twitter like really, really likes him. Uh, and a lot of that is because uh, as soon as he bought it, everyone posting negative shit about Elon Musk got a few bans handed out and accounts deleted. Like that, that was horrible, I thought. Like with literally within the first week, I remember I saw about 15 accounts just get banned for criticizing Elon Musk. And you could tell it was him going in, into the office and going, fuck that guy, get rid of him. Because it had like 100,000 likes. Yeah. And he's like, get rid of him. And, you know, you do what your boss says. So I thought that was awful. And I think that that culture has still kind of hung around on X where pe there's just like this, this overwhelming like energy of like, if you criticize Elon and it goes viral, your account's next. Mm. Uh, and so it's, it definitely seems like a, yeah, like a, a guy who really just wants to be liked buying an entire social media platform so that he can have a bunch of friends. It seems really sad. Yeah. It's working, but it seems really sad. So what What else, were there any, was there anything that made you go, oh wow, I kept, in that book? I kept laughing because uh, so many times throughout the book, the book's not written in like an endearing way, but it's also not written in like a negative way. It's just kind Tries of, to be objective. Yeah, he'd, uh, he'd just pull aside like an engineer at Twitter and be like, this is your task. You have seven days to complete. If you cannot complete the task, I'll accept your resignation. Yeah. And so many times the employees would just go, all right, well, I won't even bother doing it then. Yeah. Yeah. Or he'd get the best result out of them and they'd complete the project better than expected. It That I, was... I find that really fascinating. That was a really interesting thing as well because Twitter <clears throat> for sure, right before Elon, for sure, I, I reckon, and I think this is true of a lot of really big businesses, I reckon half the people in every... Every business that has like more than a hundred people, I reckon half of them are doing fuck all. Yeah. Just coasting. Yeah. There was a really funny, interesting story where he, his cousin and like his cousin's mates, they're all like, like 20, 23 years old. Mm. Um, he just employed them as like goons to kind of fire people who mm. weren't doing the right thing or, or complete tasks when needed. And Elon kind of gave them this task of move the servers from the San Francisco office to the, there's something other, some, yeah. somewhere else office. Yeah. And all the engineers in the office were like, well, that's just not possible. We can't do it without, you know, all the security and encryption, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So the, the goons, just like four blokes, worked out how to move them by themselves and got all the servers moved from San Francisco to the new office in like three days. Yeah, like like how much of... Just because they they just could. <laughs> yeah, like how, how, mu how much of of that website Twitter, because Twitter was like, it, it's not like it was doing well before Elon, right? It was failing and drowning and, and uh, it was infighting between like the, the Jack, the guy who founded Twitter and the current CEO and all that kind of bullshit. Like it, it was kind of a doomed app anyway. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, how much of that like was Twitter's inability to evolve and change and make good decisions was just because there were so many fucking people employed there doing nothing and the whole thing being bogged down in just admin and and bureaucracy and oh well we can't move something because this this and this and it's like yeah but just do it and the other thing that's really funny is he he gets addicted to video games but not like yeah computer games like apps <laughs> so. yeah he, he uh he still posts uh videos of him playing diablo 4 yeah and he's fucking cracked like he's really good at it like he posted a video of him like beating uh because i played diablo 4 i don't properly understand the the super end game of it but he like beat the final boss on the hardest difficulty by himself like that's crazy like really really difficult to do and requires a, a huge unbelievable amount of time mm. sunk into the game like you would have to be doing it all the time and that's a game that fucking no one really cares about it it like flopped almost immediately after it came out sold really well <laughs> and then people were like ah all the numbers and the management and the grinding and the time sink required it's too much for me but elon musk was like i am the perfect amount of autistic for this it's a really interesting book. I should it's, listen to it's it. It's a very like scary insight, though. Yeah, he seems. He, you know, he uh, he just seems like uh, super autistic. Like yeah. he seems, and I don't mean that in like a negative way. He's he seems like he's super super autistic. He really really struggles with having relationships. I mean, you look at all of his partners and all of his children, you know, or most of them anyway, uh, and then he 
is also unbelievably intelligent and smart and driven. And he's such a hustler that he, things that he's willing to endure and sacrifice, he expects from his employees, but that's a horrible life, you know? And uh, he, yeah, he just seems like he's just, uh, I don't know. I feel like, relax, man, you've done enough, but mm -hmm. he can't, he's incapable of that. And then he got sucked into buying this website and now he doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and yeah, cause how could one of arguably the most autistic people on planet earth how could they be expected to understand and run a social media website? Yeah. You know? What what does he call it? The public town square or something the like that? The public square, the town public square. square. Yeah. yeah. Which honestly I think is admirable. You know, I think that's I think that's kind of cool. Like that that to have like a place where you know, any where where freedom of speech trumps uh, advertising dollars on social media. I think that's cool and I think that is needed, but I also think that that doesn't fucking work. Like you can't monetize that. It's too expensive to run. Uh, and uh, all of these people who do want, who or who say that they want this freedom of speech social media square, they're not gonna pay for it, which is, what, which is the only way to kind of run something like that is to charge that monthly fee. Um, so yeah, anyway, probably spent way too much time on this. Uh, what did you have? Oh, the, the marketplace thing? Oh, yeah. Okay, you've got a marketplace story. So speaking of the app that fucking does everything, Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Phoebe and I moved house the other week and we had it, this big... That's rain. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's raining really heavily. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Uh, we have this big old, not old couch, big new couch, but yeah. we had to sell it due to downsizing. So Phoebe's listed a bunch of furniture. She's listed yeah. the couch for $600 and then a bunch of little furniture for like $10, $5 each. And so she's just been inundated with messages about the couch and people yeah. lowballing. Is this still available? Yeah. Will you accept a, a toothpick? Will you accept $200? Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Uh, it's a new, it's pretty much no time new. wasters. That's what you have to say in the, in the thing. You got to go no time wasters. <laughs> pretty much a uh, new couch as well. Yeah. So she's listed it and she's becoming really, really frustrated with all the time wasters. Yeah. And this innocent guy has messaged her gone. Hello. Is this available? She's responded. Yes, it is. He goes, pick up where please. She goes, pick up Karim Downs. Yeah. Your address, please. Hello. I'm coming now. $10 question mark. $10. And she goes, get fucked, you fucking piece of shit. Don't waste my fucking time. <laughs> Blocked him <laughs> and then reported him for lowballing. <laughs> you she, can report for lowballing? <laughs> That's so funny. And then she's realized that, <laughs> that he, he was asking to buy the coffee table for $10. <laughs> Not the couch. Yeah. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. How much was the coffee table list for? Ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and she feels <laughs> she feels so <laughs> awful. And I keep reminding her how bad of a person because oh, the guy doesn't so obviously speak English very well. <laughs> oh man, that's and, so fucking funny. And oh, he's God. probably trying to do the right thing by like his wife or something and try and buy a nice coffee table for that. <laughs> He's, he's probably going, oh, it's fucking stupid bitch. <laughs> she says it's $10 and now she doesn't want $10. What an insane fucking idiot. <laughs> That's so funny. You know what that is? That's me abusing the poor hotel woman. <laughs> well, someone else has fucked me around, so I'm taking out on a stranger. That's so funny. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Facebook Marketplace is like... It's great if you want to buy something. It's horrible if you want to sell something. It is. I've got I've got an old microphone up for sale, eighty dollars, mm. and <laughs> it's pretty funny. Someone goes, "Hello, is this available?" I've said yes, and they've just sent me a, a voice memo of them farting, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. That is good. Yes. Yeah, so you got to deal with trust. You can't do it on eBay, can you? <laughs> You know, you want to buy you, you, someone selling a, a trading card and they go, hey, and they send you a picture of their cock. Like, that, doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't happen, does it? No. Um, all right, so let's get into some emails here. Uh, the email segment of the show is sponsored by Patreon, patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Sign up annually and you get uh, a huge discount and a free poster and a free T-shirt. Dear God, help. It's not a bit. Um all right, so I actually have, these are my favorite ones. I have an update 
from uh, a previous podcast. Now, this is from a little while ago, so I'm going to read the first email that was sent. Okay. Um, I don't remember which one this was, but you'll you'll remember. I don't remember which episode, but you guys will be familiar. So this is uh, the first uh, email. My ex is ruining my military career. Uh, hey there. Um, all right. My friends and I... Uh, Okay, actually, this is the third email. All right, so the first email is, my ex lost her virginity to a dog, <laughs> all right? And it's this guy who's in the military, and she he, he found out that his girlfriend had a tattoo of, uh, what was it? It was um, a paw print on her crotch, and he didn't think anything of it, and I didn't think anything of it when he told me this. Uh, but then we were talking about it, and he finds out that... That's actually like a furry tattoo, or not a furry tattoo, a bestiality tattoo. Yeah. If you have a paw print near your privates, it means you fuck dogs. And he finds out that that is exactly what happened with uh, with this girl that he was dating. Um, and uh, anyway, he tells the boys about this. He's in the military, rookie mistake, and they start calling him the hound. <laughs> All right, uh, your girlfriend fucks dogs and he hates it. And he's like, what should I do? And I said, mate, you should embrace it. The hound's a fucking sick name. It's not about you. It's about your ex-girlfriend. You're not together anymore. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> and now he's just... So that e that first email was sent to me in April last or this year. Uh, and he's just sent me an update in December, right? Just now called Incredible Update. Hey, Lewis, it's the hound. It's been a while, I'm not sure if you remember, but uh, my ex-girlfriend fucks dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I have great news, good news, and slightly bad news. Okay, I haven't read this yet, by the way. I moved to a new duty station and stuck it out. The bad thing is, as uh, the bad thing is, a soldier from my old unit is also here and told everyone that my nickname is Hound. He even got me a name tag that says Hound. I definitely, uh, I definitely smoked. Uh, the absolute dog shit out of him for it. Uh, sm and he s smoked is a name for making someone do workouts as a punishment. Okay. I absolutely smoked the absolute dog shit. Well, I wouldn't say dog shit out of him for it, but I had a good laugh and he's going to be my PT partner for a while still. God, you fucking military guys and your lingo. All right. I don't know what a fucking PT partner is. He explains I smoked him and then says what that is. What's a PT partner? I'm not even going to Google it. Personal training partner? PT? I don't think so. You don't have a personal trainer in the military? Paratrooper partner? All right. Now I have to look it up. Uh, just, uh, I think it's just I think it's <laughs> personal training. What is a PT partner in the military? Let's see what ChatGPT reckons. PT partner is physical training partner. Okay, you were right. Great. Okay, <laughs> good. Maybe it didn't need explaining. Maybe I'm an idiot. The haircuts make me stupid. Great news, my soldier, great news, my soldier told me my ex took my advice and started working at a dog shelter near the, yeah. near the base, oh no, where she was almost immediately arrested for having sex with a dog. What? What? Oh my God, okay. I called a couple of buddies of mine who were cops out there and apparently she'd been working with the shelter for about two months where she would work night shifts and have sex with different dogs. Oh. No way. She was given a light warning. A light warning? <laughs> she was given a light warning a month in when she was caught by the boss sucking one of the dogs off. She got a light warning for that? A write-up? Caught Marie sucking off the dog today, but dogs seemed to enjoy it, so I just gave her a warning. That's crazy. Is this true? I don't know. I feel like it has to be true. After that incident, the boss installed hidden cameras all over the building, where a month later she was caught having sex with the same dog. Oh, my God. She was probably going, oh, don't adopt this one. He's no good. <laughs> 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 no, this one's no good. Keep him in the shelter. She's now in prison for five months and has to serve a year's worth of community service. Hopefully it's not around any dogs. Oh. Anyway, thanks for the new face. Now my ex will definitely come to you instead of me. Oh, no. <laughs> Have a shit one. The hound is out. Oh, my God. That is... Uh, thank you so much for that update. That's crazy that you can have sex with a dog and just get... Oh, I don't know. Here's, here's, here's my hot take on bestiality, okay? <sighs> I've, I've, I've debated so many people on this, okay? I think 
If you're a woman, mm. less a sentence. If you're a man, life sentence. Mm. And I don't. I feel like I don't need to explain why <laughs> the mechanics of it. Oh, yuck. Yeah. This episode's demonetized for sure. Ah, oh, that sucks. <laughs> you know the last few have been green. You know how you know that's like that's about fifteen bucks a week. That's pretty good. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. You know what? We're probably going to leave it there. That's it. You know what? <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for listening uh, and uh, jump over to Patreon right now. Patreon.com slash Spears. Sign up annually if you can. A lot of people, by the way, uh, they're apologizing to me because they can't afford it or they're also doing it tough. That's fine. If you're, in a, if you're also in financial hardship, I totally get it, man. Everyone is, right? It's, we're in a fucking cost of living crisis. If you're doing it tough, if you're struggling to pay your own rent and your own mortgage, that's fine, okay? You are way more important than I am. If you are in a position to help, thank you. And that will be very appreciated. But I don't, I don't want people, you know, sending me their last fucking $20. You know what I mean? Um, so if you can help uh, and you're in a position to do so, I would love uh, your help because, I, cause, look, I do need it. I'm not embarrassed. Uh, it's been tough for me. So patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Uh, jump on there. And thank you so much to everyone who has. The response has been fucking mental and... Uh, incredible so thank you thank you thank you i i don't have the words for it um all right i'll talk to you guys next sunday stay away from the dogs and i hope you have a shit one bye stay away from the dogs oh.